r slash ask reddit police officers of reddit what's the creepiest disappearance case you've ever been assigned to not a cop but i track missing persons accounts for a bank in coordination with the police one day a cop called and said they wanted to track the accounts of a woman who had gone missing at the hands of a dangerous trafficker the last transactions i could trace since she disappeared was at one of our branches I pulled the footage and the trafficker was pulling a bunch of money from her account. I received an alert the next day from the account stating that a purchase was made. The purchase was from a hardware store. Shortly after, the next purchase was for a carpet cleaner rental. Needless to say, cops contacted us and says they suspect he killed her, but they couldn't locate a body. Irked me. Felt like I had witnessed a murder through simple financial transactions. Brandon Lawson. He ran out of gas on the highway in the middle of the night and called his brother to come help him. Shortly after he called 911 and reported that someone had chased him into the woods and that he needed police. Eventually his brother and one police officer arrive at the scene and find his truck abandoned but no sign of Brandon. Brandon calls his brother and says he's bleeding and is 10 minutes away from his truck. That was the last anyone ever heard from him, and searches of the area turned up empty. Not a cop, but had a pretty messed up disappearance happen about a mile away from where I live. A girl went missing. She was 12. The whole town, state police, and I believe possibly the FBI all got involved. Search parties in the woods, and through the streets for about 2 or 3 days. Turns out she had gone over to these kids. How's that she knew from school, to have them fix her bike. Turns out the kids, brothers one 15 and the other 17, planned on stealing it. Well, she put up a struggle and the one brother wound up strangling her in his basement. She was found a few days after she went missing. They stuffed her body in a trash can on trash night. My grandfather was a policeman and a fireman at different points in his life. His spooky disappearance story actually came from his time as a fireman. He hasn't told me the story in a long while so I'm a little fuzzy in the details, but here goes. His team gets called to a house fire in a small village, rural England. It's late at night. The fire is reported by a local who was walking home. Several other bystanders have arrived by the time the fire engine gets there, and there are multiple reports of screams for help from inside the building. They start to douse the fire and three of the responders, including my granddad, enter the building via the back door to attempt to rescue the people trapped inside. The thing is, they don't find a soul. Nobody is there. They clear the whole place out, stop the fire, effectively make the building safe. Later on, it's confirmed that the fire started in the kitchen, likely the hob, where food was midway through being prepared. As far as anyone knew, the couple who lived there had been at home. Relatives had no idea where they might have gone that night. My granddad and his colleagues have a funny feeling so they get local police properly involved. Crime scene investigation uncover blood on the floor in one room, but any other evidence was destroyed in the fire. They can't confirm who the blood belongs to, it apparently didn't match the blood types of the two vanished residents. The fire department are very suspicious at this point and apparently the police want to drop the investigation in favor of a manhunt for the missing people, but they end up expanding the investigation radius and find that apparently an unidentified van was parked outside the house that left just before the fire was reported. The investigation goes dead, but over a year later they find the burned remains of the man who lived there in a grave in the woods several towns away. They never found the woman, so it was suspected that she killed him and burned down the house to conceal it. They never figured out where the screams from inside the building were coming from, though. I'm not a cop, but my mom used to be. She was called in to help with a local disappearance. Normal stuff, right? Think again. It started out normal, her name was Jane, I'm leaving out the last name for legal reasons, and her parents say she left the house one night to go to a party, but the next day, she was gone. Nada. No trace. After searching the whole town, they finally searched the parents' house. She wasn't anywhere until they checked the backyard. They saw some misplaced grass and dug it up. Lo and behold, there she was. Dead. Stabbed 28 times in the chest. The mom fainted as she was out there too, and the dad tried to run. He ended up being the culprit. And, so that's the story of why my mom quit. 
dealt several times with a young mother, who would always go missing for a few days and leave her child with relatives. Several missing persons reports over time. Turns out she was shacking up with her PCP dealing boyfriend in a nearby city. One day the lady walks in, and says her daughter was kidnapped. I do some work and find the aunt took the child, because mom is just a terrible person. State did not want to get involved, so we have to give the kid back. I turn to my partner, and tell him mom will definitely be dead within a few months. Probably turn up in a ditch, or dumped in the river, where she goes to visit her dealer boyfriend. Fast forward 3 months, and I turn on the news, to see a story of a woman found dumped in the river. It was mom. She was stabbed to death by her boyfriend, and dumped in the river. That one creeped me out a bit. Not a cop, but I did my undergrad at a college in Vermont. In the winter we would quite literally be snowed under. Over Christmas break, a sophomore went missing. He wasn't a close friend, but we had couple of classes together. It was a small liberal arts college in a small town, so everyone in the community was pretty freaked out. His phone and wallet were left in his room, so the theory was that he's been abducted and maybe even killed. Campus got real scary for a few months. There was police everywhere, helicopters overhead, students marching through the snow in lines looking for a body. Finally when the snow and ice thawed they found his body in the creek. Police surmise he entered the water from the bridge in town, but no one knows if he jumped or was pushed. This one still haunts me. In the town I grew up in, the UK, a woman in her 30s, her three kids, and their car all went missing. Her husband was known for being a bit of a lad and the immediate presumption was she'd had enough and left him, but her parents hadn't heard from her, her bank account wasn't used DTC, but it was nearly a week before anybody seemed to get really worried about it. She'd pick the kids up from school and then never went home, even though it was only a 10 minute journey. Eventually one of the 10 year old son's friends mentioned that he was planning on trying to get his mum to go and get them a McFlurry. The nearest McDonald's was a town away. They eventually realized that instead of going straight home, she'd agreed to drive to the McDonald's and gone the back way, part of which is along what we call the 40 foot, basically a massive dike. Found them all still strapped into the car at the bottom. Husband was engaged again, and his fiance was pregnant within a year. Also not a cop. In my town a local hairdresser slash mother went missing. There was a lot of speculation what happened as she has some drama in her life. Turns out another woman who worked at the hair salon had a fake identity in Jolene. The woman who went missing was getting suspicious. The woman killed Jolene in the hair salon. I believe she even drove Jolene's car to out local Walmart to buy cleaning supplies to clean up. She was even seen on camera throwing out what is assumed to be the body. The body was never found. Nonetheless the police searched absolutely everywhere for the body. Even on my road. I live a 2 miles away from the salon. It was a really sad case. No one deserves a death like that. When it came out publicly that she was killed in the salon I stopped following the case. People post about it on our local Facebook group. So I see some updates there. Just depresses me. Google Jolene Cummings Nassau County. You'll see from the videos why it was so creepy. Watching it all unfold in person was disturbing as the news kept us updated. Originally everyone was hoping she skipped town. The killer has a bunch of fake identities. Extra creepy to me as it's a very small town and my mother went to that hair salon. I never asked my mom if she knew Jolene or saw her killer herself. My mom was pretty upset. Not a police officer, but this story made me realize I don't think I could handle the stress of being one. Madison Scott disappeared from Hogsback Lake outside of Vanderhoof, British Columbia, May 28, 2011. There was a birthday party being held by the lake and everyone was supposed to camp out, but instead, most people left. Madison had already set up her tent and decided to stay. Her friends left around midnight, the last people left around 4am, and that was the last time anyone saw her. Her cell phone pinged off a tower at 8am the next morning and then nothing. Royal Canadian Mounted Police and countless people from small towns and communities across interior British Columbia held multiple search parties. People dragged lake bottoms, hunters went out to check hidden hunting cabins, pilots who owned planes did massive aerial searches. Found absolutely nothing. She just vanished into thin air. 
I was about to write the whole thing here, but I realized it's already been written and this link in the description below. I think it will always be the creepiest one for me, because it was relatively close to my hometown. I knew people who knew her, and just any time someone disappears into thin air, I realize that life can change in an instant 8 years later and there are still searches held for her. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for more edit videos like this. Don't forget to smash that like button, and stay crispy guys.